Intamin unveiled the Megalite in 2008, and it took the roller coaster enthusiast community by storm. Enthusiasts praised the incredible airtime this compact ride provided. Nigloland, a small park in France, essentially has a Megalite in Alpina Blitz. Except this coaster was built by Mach. It's quite interesting that Mach basically copied Intamin's layout. Heck, the stats are pretty indistinguishable. The height, speed, and length are eerily similar. The coasters check in between 102 and 108 feet tall, both are between 52 and 53 miles per hour, and both are within 100 feet of each other in terms of length. Alpina Blitz is the undeniable star attraction in Nigla Land, and the coaster looks fantastic with its royal blue paint scheme and Swiss themed station. And you further get into the atmosphere when you hear the Swiss music playing, and you see the ride operator donning traditional themed gear. And this coaster also has two really neat features before you even load it. First, it has a reversible bin system. This is a similar system to what Universal used on Flying Dinosaur. The bins open on the side you load, and reopen on the side you exit. This is great because it minimizes crowding on the load platform between boarding and exiting guests. Plus, it keeps your items safely locked until you return to the station. Alpina Blitz also has a turnstile counter. The ride will only let enough people into the air gates to fill the next train. If you want a specific row, the park had absolutely no issue if you step to the side and let others pass to board this train. As for my favorite row, it was easily the back. The airtime was more extreme back there. And I think the park knows it too because the back row has a higher height requirement than every other row. This coaster has identical trains to the mock launch coasters and that's perfectly fine by me because I love those trains. I know some dislike how the restraints continuously tighten during the ride, but I find the trains extremely comfortable and have never had an issue getting airtime because my upper body is so free. This coaster has a quick chain lift and then it starts like a miniature I-305. The first drop gives some incredible ejector airtime in the back row, and it's followed by a low to the ground turn that pulls some serious G's. I started to gray out on every single ride. This coaster pulls 4.3 G's and I'm almost certain this is where it occurs. That's followed by a twisted camelback that dives under the lift hill. This is easily the slowest hill on the entire ride, but it still gives a decent mix of laterals and floater airtime. That immediately leads into another sizable camelback with strong floater airtime. Alpina Blitz then rips through three straight S hills, offering strong pops of ejector airtime and abrupt laterals. This was my favorite section on the lone Intamin Megalite that I rode, and it was every bit as wild on Alpina Blitz. You then cruise over three bunny hills. The hills are small, and the train has lost quite a bit of speed by this point, but all three hills still deliver some great airtime. These hills offer something in between ejector and floater airtime, but it's delivered in copious amounts. You then crawl around a final turn and hit the brakes. And I really only have one criticism with Alpina Blitz, and that's that the ride doesn't feel that fast. I know that's a weird criticism for a ride as small as Alpina Blitz, but Chance's Lightning Run, a ride similar in height at Kentucky Kingdom, feels considerably faster. In fact, that's why I have a slight preference for Lightning Run over this ride. That being said, Alpina Blitz still is an airtime machine and incredibly fun, but it is one flaw with the ride. So what do I rate Alpina Blitz? I'd give it a 9 out of 10. As I said earlier, this coaster is an airtime machine. It offers every type of airtime imaginable. Ejector, flejector, and floater, with the occasional dose of high G's and laterals mixed in. Plus, it's very smooth and super rewritable like many mock coasters. And inevitably, I know people will ask if I prefer this to the Intamin Megalites, but I'm not sure if I can make a fair judgment. I definitely preferred Alpina Blitz to the one Intamin Megalite I rode, but that Megalite was Tobu Zoo's Kawasemi, which I know was not running to its fullest potential. On the day I visited Tobu Zoo, it was deserted. As a result, Kawasemi barely ran on the day I visited, and when it did run, I was basically one of only two riders on the entire train. Plus, I have heard that Megalite has a slower lift than the others. So one day I hope to ride one of these Intamin Megalites at its fullest potential, so I can make a fair judgment if it's better or worse than Alpina Blitz. But back to Alpina Blitz, this is a wonderful coaster and it's well worth visiting Nigloland for this coaster. 
Nigglethland is a really charming park and has more than just Alpina Blitz, but this is the undeniable star. What are your thoughts on Alpina Blitz or this style of attraction? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Canopy Coaster and thank you for listening.